with that said, he's obviously not going to be joining us here today, but you do have me. And today's session is all about uh, questions and answers or Q&A. So I am uh, open to any discussions you guys want to have about uh, areas of life that are, you know, either not working for you or not working for you at a level 10 and you're looking for some clarity or openness and um, yeah, yeah, Kathleen, that's awesome. Yeah, he went there last year and it was super powerful for him. He had a really great experience with that and they really enjoyed having him there. So they asked him back for round two. I actually have a similar opportunity out here that I'm still uh, discovering for myself. So yeah, guys, if you're just getting here, uh, today's session is all about Q&A. So whatever you got for me, uh, feel free to drop your questions in the box and we'll kind of go from there. Anybody, questions? If Elon was here, I would just interact with him directly in the meantime, but <laughs> today that would just be me looking like a crazy person, which I'm okay with. All right, so while you guys are, are pondering that, I definitely would want to speak into your personal questions, tell you guys about um, something that's going on for me currently. Um, I did a um, interesting uh, kind of ceremony on, on Sunday. Hey, Carrie, what's going on? Um, <clears throat> and that definitely led to some interesting things. It was kind of a well, it was Easter, um, and it wasn't like an Easter ceremony, but it was a um, it's called a, an angel activation, and it's like a kind of like a rebirth ceremony. It's a energy type of work that's done on you, and I won't go into all the particulars. But since it's a uh, rebirth type of ceremony, um, energistically that felt really, really unique. Um, it actually felt a lot like doing medicine for a day or two at the end of it, just a huge blast of energy. Um, and it really takes you, at least in his own words, and by the way, there's a video on my timeline of the guy describing exactly what the process is, which is really valuable and actually quite entertaining. Um, so if you want to check out exactly what that is, I can even drop the link in here afterwards. Um, but without going into all the details, what was interesting about it is because it's a rebirth process, the only thing that could then bring in uh, past-based trauma is by communicating about anything in your past. So um, the request was uh, ideally to uh, not talk about anything in your past, which as I found out really quickly means you pretty much can't open your mouth to anything. So I spent um, Monday and Tuesday outside of the things that I really felt that I got to do. Uh, I actually didn't do much of anything and um, spent a good deal of time on, the couch, on my couch meditating. Um, and it's because I found that not saying things regarding your past is really difficult from jokes you make to sarcasm you use to wisdom that you share. Everything has to do with like past-based conversation. And I'm like, oh, what an interesting experiment not to like re-speak old patterning into this new future. And what does that look like? So if it's something you guys kind of want to play with, it, it's an interesting experiment to run yourself is to sit and, uh, A, I would tell somebody in your life that you're around a lot, that you're running this experiment so that they can catch you because you'd be shocked or maybe not um, how often you're like, okay, well, I remember this one time and okay, well, can I share this with you? And all that language that we use that really just re-triggers old patterns from the past. And as you're moving into like a, a new future that you're creating, uh, that doesn't serve, right? So isn't it interesting that if we wanted to really transform any area of our life, it's nearly as simple as just not talking about it. And even though that's super simple in, in concept, uh, it, you know, implementing that is actually quite difficult because we're so unconsciously regurgitating and recreating our past uh, over and over and over again. And that's been a, a real... Uh, I don't want to call it a challenge, but a real test, a real experiment over the last two and a half, three days here. Um, so today's kind of like the last day I really committed to doing that. Uh, regardless, though, I, I want to be extremely conscious of looking at what is it that I'm really creating with my words. There's always another level of consciousness right around the way that we're using our language. Um, and, you guys, and you guys know that we're, you know, Elon and I are uh, been in that field of mastery for a long time. And it doesn't mean that we've mastered anything at all because it's just amazing to see how often it is that we draw into like that I project my genius or I initiate my value or that I 
um, kind of like bait people into my games, into my identity through like all this task-based conversation. And then you watch this, this pattern ensue, even the jokes you tell, uh, all of it. Um, to the point where even if you're speaking into future and you're like, okay, I'm going to jump on a train. Okay, well, how do you know what a train is? Or, you know, anything like that. It's, a, it's really this like kind of paradoxical way of thinking. And I, and I think it's a really, really cool experiment to run because I have found a ton, a ton, a ton of value in my life in, in dealing with experiments inside of paradoxical ways of thinking. So yeah, anything you guys have about that? Any thoughts, uh, any questions you have, whatever. That's just my, my own stuff that's been happening in the last few days. Um, it's been interesting. I definitely, it definitely put me into the, not just the process, but, um, that experiment put me in this process of kind of wanting to, uh, isolate myself a little bit and, um, just like spending a lot of me time. So that's kind of been the last three days for me and it's been great. I can feel a uh, definitely realignment happening inside my body. So, uh, Jessica says, uh, I'm struggling to change my beliefs around money. You have to work hard for money. I feel like my brain is constantly battling with my heart. Do you have any exercises to get your brain to align with your heart? Uh, yeah, I mean, Jessica, like in, in simple terms, it's it's meditation. Um, yeah, it's so funny because even right now I want to share something with you and it's totally uh, past pace. But I am going to sort of break the rules for the next hour um, consciously just because I, I know that it would be silly of me not to, to share this stuff with you. So... Um, I want to give you an example and then we'll apply it to money. If we were looking at, I think the number one thing we're all wanting to feel is appreciation, love, gratitude, right? Those are like the high vibrational frequencies. So number one, I want you to think about your relationship with money. And if your conversations around money allow for, and the conversations are just a symptom of the vibrational frequency that you feel around money, right? Um, so do you have love, appreciation, gratitude around money? Uh, I imagine given by your question, that's probably not the experience around it. So let's take a look at, I just want to like isolate love here for a second. And I want to have you look at and consider, or you can look at and consider if you want to, um, that like, what's, what's the truth of a reality? Okay. So like if money is just an illusion that we create inside of reality and we're dealing with like, like it with it, the real thing that you need to understand and fix and change it and all that kind of stuff. I want to point out that that's probably what you've been doing. And I want you to also notice that that probably hasn't made much of a difference in terms of your, your relationship to it. So we want to start looking at everything as, as relationships to these things. And you may have heard me say this before, but I'll reiterate it here. The only quote unquote truth that I've been able to surmise so far, as far as what my reality is, is it's just sensory input inside the body, right? So it's like you have some feeling around money, and really what's underneath that feeling is some sensory input that you've gotten through your body and you've made that sensory input in your body mean something about your relationship with money. And the truth is that there's just this sensation happening in your body. And the reason we meditate is to put consciousness around these sensations in our body. Uh, furthermore, meditation is going to have these sensations kind of like rise to the forefront of your consciousness. And what that really is, most people are like pushing that stuff back down all the time. You know, as that energy rises, it's that energy rising is always your opportunity to transmute that stuff. Now, while it's rising, if you judge it and assess it and try to understand it in the ways that you've always done, all you're already all you're doing is reaffirming what that sensation in your body means. What you've always made it mean. Now you're reaffirming that meaning, and you're just creating more of that which you don't want. So we want to start looking at it. So again, I'm going to isolate love here as an example. When you were younger, at some point in time you had heard about this concept of love. Maybe you didn't directly understand it quite yet at that time, but you understood, but you heard, heard about this concept, right? And then somewhere along the way, you, you met a, a guy, maybe a girl, whatever, you know, whatever your preference is, you know, maybe not talking directly to you, just but whatever, whatever your first experiences with love were. And you shared that with somebody and somebody's like, Oh, Jessica, that's, that's love you're experiencing. And you're like, Oh, it is. Okay, great. And you agree with it. And then whatever sensation in that moment you were having, you align that in your body with the thoughts around love and you started creating a framework that this sensation means love. And then you started finding more evidence for that framework as you go on. Hopefully that kind of uh, aligns for you. So I just want to point out that at some point I had an experience around love also, and my sensation was probably different than your sensation, right? So we have basically seven and a half billion people more or less we have different sensations. Like how do you know that in your body, the sensation of love doesn't feel like the sensation I have when I experience hate, 
or anger or jealousy or any of those other sensations, right? So that that sensation of love to you is like a, like a unique fingerprint that you have around love. And notice how then we spend time as humans arguing around who's having the right sensation and how they're supposed to have it. And that's like arguing around whether or not you have the, the right fingerprint and then trying to make everyone believe that you have the right fingerprint and everyone else's fingerprint is wrong. Kind of a waste of fucking time, isn't it? So my point is, is that if that's the case and we've all distinguished the sensation in our body in somewhat of a different manner, that's kind of good news because that means nobody's actually right. <coughs> Excuse me. About what that sensation actually means. And furthermore, that means that we have this amazing opportunity to recreate what sensations in our body actually mean. So notice that every time you feel jealousy, same sensation in your body, and it starts with the sensation. You feel that pit or that feeling in your body, and you go, oh shit, here comes jealousy. Now, does it really mean that that's jealousy, or does that mean that you say that that's jealousy? So when we meditate, there's an opportunity to really get into, like quiet down and start listening to the sensory input in your body. Now you can, you can kind of like bring up, you know, money while you meditate. Excuse the background noise. Right. And see, okay. Oh, wow. And I, I feel this negativity of money and like the left side of my body, like near my heart or near my stomach or wherever it kind of occurs for you. And then you could say, well, it doesn't actually, and you can start re, like playing with, and noticing the judgments and the assessments you have specifically around attachment to what money means, to what you crave about money, to what you resist about money, those kind of things. And then just start noticing the truth that really all that's happened so far is you've had a sensation in the body that you're making it mean something about money and it doesn't mean that at all. So in that moment, if you do not react to the sensation like you always do, again, with the understanding, with the attachment, with the craving, with the inversion, what it leaves is a void after the sensation occurs. And then you have an opportunity to transmute that into something else. Now, the moment you judge that sensation, you kill the process of, trans, of transmutation. This is why we meditate, is to bring the stuff up that you don't want to deal with normally on a day-to-day -day, and give it an opportunity to truly transmute itself. And that can only come with no judgment. And then there you'll, you'll see that there's this, there's this kind of void that's available to you and in that moment that's where prayer that's where mantra uh that's where all these other tools that we have about speaking things into existence come into creation and then you start using it and, and the more and i will say the, the less that you judge it or you know the, the less that you have no judgment and the more you participate in the act of creation the more you'll start noticing that that sensation in your body actually shifts and moves and starts creating a different vibrational frequency field inside the body and starts attracting different opportunities for you around what it is that we're calling money. You know, but truly money, if you, if you, like, if you really look at the significance people out around money, the significance is what creates attachment and it's what creates a lot of the problems. If you like in reality, what is money? It's just, you know, dirty paper with a dead presence on it. And, and more, more so that even more than that these days, it's just zeros and ones in the computer being transferred back and forth. It literally means nothing. But what we are making it mean, or at least the context we're using in, in, in our reality for it, is it's a measurement of value. So a lot of people that are struggling with money, it's because they're focusing on all the wrong things. They think it's a linear path to creating more money, <clears throat> when really it's just a side effect of the value that you're creating in society. So it's like if you want to create more money, stop focusing on creating more money and start focusing on creating more value. And it's that simple. So, and if you're wondering, like, okay, well, how do I create more value? Well, that means that you personally need to put yourself on a path of some kind of mastery. So it's like throwing yourself back into some kind of education so that not, not for the information necessarily, because the information is just the doorway that you want to walk through to gain personal experience. Like I would never hire a coach who's read all the books, but has never implemented anything. I'm super happy that you sound you know, smart at a dinner party, but uh, that's pretty much where that ends. And if I can't see that you're living your life in integrity with the principles that you're talking about, I just know you're full of shit. You might be a really smart person, you might even be good at memorizing stuff and you're great at regurgitating things. And again, like fluffing up your ego by making things sound really good. But if I can't sense that vibrationally you're living your life at the levels that you're talking about, that I know you're just you know completely full of it. And, and to be honest, like where I live in Southern California for as much work as people do, there's a lot of that going on because there are a lot of people who are you know like in the development developmental space and they read all the right books and they're following all these gurus 
but you could see what I call as lived. They, they haven't actually lived it. So it just occurs as information. It doesn't occur as knowledge or wisdom. And it's like, great, okay. And you read uh, Deepak Chopra's book, you read Eckhart Tolle's book, and I know that you have an understanding and you grasp the concept, but if I can't see the results in your life based on the concept, I know that you don't have the wisdom around it yet. And then that there's no alignment in that for me. So hopefully that helps you out. Um, I would really recommend Jessica reading uh, T. Harv Eker's Millionaire Mind book. Uh, that's a really great book for having like <laughs> alternate paradigm shifts around the sensation around money, around looking at your own limiting beliefs around money. I think it does a really good job of, have, of giving you like uh, reframe perspectives to have some freedom around that. Does that help? Does that help? And does anybody have any other questions regarding money or really anything else? Amy, did that help you as well? Got some insights from that? Awesome. Cool. I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, any other question, guys, around that? Or around anything else? Uh, anything anybody want to share about just um, – deriving meaning from the past right so like just i think what i what i shared earlier on about like not sharing past-based stories it could be interesting for you to run an experiment between now and next week and i'd love for you to share about it if you do um what would it be like to not share the stories you have around your experience with money and something else you might want to look at and this is applicable by the way to any area of life so whatever you guys are looking at i would just apply it there to make a distinction within yourself about the subtle difference, but a very important difference between sharing about something and complaining about something. And you know the difference, right? When you have friends that complain about stuff incessantly, it's a very draining experience. So any kind of persistent complaint you guys have in your life is just a clue to what it is that you're resisting right now. And notice that the thing you're resisting, you're continuously creating it through language by talking about it all the time. So I would say that the difference between a complaint and sharing is a complaint is a pers it's persistent. It keeps occurring. When you truly share something, sorry for the background noise, when you truly share something, it's with the intent of letting it go, and it's going to feel like freedom. Like, oh, like after you share it, there's like room to breathe. It's, it doesn't occur as heavier. So if, if you're sharing something or if you're, I'm saying, if you're complaining, complaining about something, you'll have this experience of like it's crushing you, you're sad, uh, it's heavier, you know, it's like draining your energy when you're sharing. It's the exact opposite, exact opposite experience. It's like, I'm letting this go. I feel lighter. I'm energized. This is amazing. And, and that's a lot of what the work we do when we're coaching is it's like all about having people continuously share to let go. And that sharing allows for them to also put consciousness on that, which is really not working for them. So they can notice how many times in the day, like the mind is putting them in this loop. And that they're creating it with people in their life, training the people in their life to respond to them through that complaint. And that's really one of the things that we see a lot with friendships, with family members, is like the friends you keep are the ones that listen to your complaints. They never call you out on your shit and they agree, you know, they agree with all your stuff. If they didn't agree with you, you wouldn't keep them around. And then the other ways that relationships could be is people that listen to you and hold you accountable through your commitments. So like, so like my friends and with Elon and myself, if like we are in a space where we're not listed, like one of us has a commitment, like a clear commitment to something and we're not living out of that commitment, we have and we've given the right to the people around us between ourselves to call ourselves out on the fact that we're not living from that commitment and then looking at what's disempowering us from powerfully living through that commitment. Is there any limiting belief right now? Is there some kind of emotion that needs to pass through? Right, like really going down the levels really from the mentality all the way through to the vibrational frequency. I can tell you that understanding why you don't have money in your life will not help you have more money in your life. Because while you might understand concepts from a book, notice how many books you guys have probably read or courses you've taken that like, you're like, oh my God, I totally understand. This is so cool. Like I can't wait to uh, apply it in my life. And then two days later, you feel like shit again and it makes zero difference in your life whatsoever. Notice how the understanding really does not increase the quality of your life. And then notice, in contrast to that, that when you have an emotional experience with something, 
that vibrationally changes the way that you feel about something, everything changes almost instantaneously. So we really want to look at, okay, what's really empowering us as people? Is it acquiring more information? Not really. I mean, we'd like, you know, everyone has access to so much information today. If, if that was what made people happy, we'd have the happiest society of all time right now. People would be, you know, fit and six packs and everyone would be in love. You know, there's how many countless books and websites are, do we have dedicated to love and to getting six packs I mean, you know, and, and being healthy and stuff like that. Yet we have a, a populace that's unhappy, unpassionate, um, you know, and, and everything else that goes along with it. So, you know, you guys have to assess for yourself all the times, like what's, what's truly important. And, and, and that's why we're so adamant about you acquiring wisdom, not acquiring information because wisdom lets me know that you feel it vibrationally. If you've really been around wise people, around wise sages, around wise gurus, it's because you know, they've gone through that experience and also know that the human experience is, is a united one. You know, while we all might not be dealing with the same circumstances, uh, and I say this a lot, like, you know, I don't, I've never been sexually abused or raped by anybody, uh, although I've been around a lot of women who've shared that with me and around me. And I can tell you that I know that energy. I know what, it, you know, I know what that energy feels like to uh, be violated that way, even if I've never been in that circumstance personally and vice versa, you know, men go through certain experiences that women don't have to go through yet vibrationally, you guys know exactly, you know, we can totally empathize with one another and, and, and completely feel what that experience feels like. And that's where we're united is in the vibrational field. So a lot of the stuff that you hear Elon and I share about, you know, the, the wisdom that comes forth, it's that we've gone through many of the experiences you guys are now looking to grow and develop into. And I'm not saying that we've mastered it, but we've not probably gone to a different level with it. And we have integrity around that area of our life. So if we were to talk about, um, like if I came to your bedroom, right? And you have a white carpet and you have like a white, sorry, the background noise again. And you have like a white carpet and the more integrity that you have in your life, the cleaner that white carpet is. If you come into my house out of integrity with your muddy boots and you start walking on my white carpet, I'm going to see that dirt all over that white carpet. That's really what occurs to me. Like when, you know, when you guys come, it's like, it's like you're just bringing that thing that I, that I've already cleaned up in my house. You're bringing the dirt back in. I'm like, Oh, there's that dirt again. And I just know how to speak into it because I've gone through that personal experience. And again, if I, I truly believe that if you, if you look at anything long enough and you really focus on it, and I think most people, they just don't invest enough time focusing on any, any one thing. They, they have their focus on like 20 things at one time. I think it's prudent to pick like one, maybe two things a week that you run an experiment on and just hyper-focus on those things. Like Jess, if you hyper-focus and put your attention on your conversations around money, I guarantee you by the end of this week, your occurring world around money and what you would notice would completely alter from where it is right now. It's if you're looking at money, you're looking at health, you're looking at business, and you're trying to change everything at one time, you're looking at the macro instead of looking at the micro, it, it gets overwhelming and confusing where you could just focus on money, transform that area of your life. And it's not like when you transform your conversation around money that it won't transform every area of your life. It just does. The way that we do one thing is the way we do it. We do everything. And every single transformation is gonna have you know these effects on every area of your life. Like money is a huge, money and health and relationships communication love like all those things when they're not taken care of i don't think anybody here can tell me that it doesn't have a huge impact on their lives and let me know if like you know if anything opened up out of listening to all that all right um sorry about the noise guys all right so michael fritz how do you feel about constructive criticism where a person is criticized to the point where they feel bad about themselves do you think Someone needs to be made feel bad to improve themselves. Um, uh, you can hear the conversation behind me. Um, so, Michael, look, <laughs> that's a great question. I, uh, I'm just waiting for it to pass a little bit. Yeah, I, uh, I don't believe in, in criticism. Um, criticism only comes when we volunteer information to one another that we didn't ask for. And then it occurs it's criticism. If you really wanted to find out about yourself and you really wanted to know how it is that you show up in your environment, you would just go and ask people. Uh, we have specific questions that we actually do as an interview process with people that we coach um, that, you know, people who've been 
quote unquote criticizing you for years, um, you will be able to open up, like literally complete everything, clear everything, honestly, within about an hour. So just notice that we give each other a lot of feedback um, and we don't ask each other for permission. And when we don't ask for permission, it makes us feel like there's something wrong with us. Um, so often we use language with people that uh, either subtly or very directly makes them feel like there's something wrong with them. And that's just because we're unconsciously using language. You can give anybody any piece of feedback when you tell them um, specifically what's the intention and give them uh, very clear parameters as to why you're saying what you're saying. When we get feedback is because we're not clear about why the person's saying what they're saying and then we add our own shit into it because it sounds like something somebody said before, it triggers some like past event and then we go into fight or flight mode and we immediately just start attacking this person because we couldn't possibly be what they're saying. The funny thing, the, fu the funny thing is, is like, you know, for all the years that I've done developmental work, when the person on the stage is being worked with um, is almost exclusively and always the last person to get it there. Everyone in the audience gets it like that. They see exactly what that person needs. You have so much subjectivity through your identity and so much evidence that you found over the years for that's the way people are, that's the way the world is, that's the way I am. And here's the thing, none of it is true. You've made all that shit up. It's all stories that your brain has invested a lot of time in finding evidence for because that's what survival is. Survival is, I know everything. Survival is, um, I know how this is gonna turn out. Uh, you know, all that predictability. Now your brain doesn't care whether or not you like what it's coming up with. It just knows that if, you know, it wants predictability and the more predictability you have in your life, the more it equates it to survival. Uh, guys, if you're having trouble hearing me, I can, I can move. Um, so, yeah, so just take a look for yourself, you know, when people are giving you that feedback, you could just tell people like, hey, look, you know, I really appreciate what you're telling me right now. I'm having a difficult time listening to it. Uh, when, when I stop reacting so emotionally, I would love to come back again and ask you questions directly about this, like, so you're not just volunteering the information and I'm not actually hearing what you're saying. You know, if you have people in your life that are yelling at you, if you have people in your life that keep telling you the same thing over and over again, uh, chances are they're having the experience of you not listening to them. I promise you, if you actually invest the time truly getting what they're saying just one time and listening to it, they would stop saying that thing. So what we see over and over again is people are not trained listeners. Um, thanks, Sandy, for letting me know. Yeah, um, yeah, people are just not trained listeners. Um, you think you're listening, but you're really not. You're mostly just listening to the chatter in your head, which means you're not listening. You're listening to what you're saying about what's being said, and that's not what's being said. You know, really listening is really listening from nothing. Um, getting what you get, not what you not. And just seeing that everybody's everybody's got opinions about everything and their own perspectives. And, you know, people can pretty much tell me anything these days and and. I can't say without fault, but for the most part, it rarely, if ever, changes my mood or my approach to life. I'm so clear internally about who I am and what I'm about that I just hear it as like, okay, that's interesting. Let me take a look at that and see if it feels good for me or not. You know, and that's really where I come to when somebody says something to me. I'm like, okay, let me check in with this. Does that make me feel expansive? Does that make me feel contraction? If I have resistance to it. I'm extremely interested as what specifically around what they said made me feel resistant because so often times that's really the truth and I'm not willing to look there. And that's a blind spot for me because there's like, you would never react to anything that you had completion about. You only react to the stuff that you're not complete about. So if you, so if you feel complete about something, it, like it wouldn't, it wouldn't even, it wouldn't do anything to you. Just be like, okay, that's fine. Thank you. I appreciate you that. And that's that. So hopefully that, uh, that opens up something for you. Um, and Michael, you know, for those people that you feel like you're getting a lot of that criticism from, uh, A, if you're in a heightened emotional state, I wouldn't go and interact with them at that time. It would be really useful for you to go and actually say to them something like, hey, I've noticed that, you know, in the last few months you've been trying to tell me something. I've, I've noticed that I haven't really been listening. Um, I'm in a space right now where I actually want to hear what you're saying because I think there might be something valuable in there for me to look at. Would you mind sharing with me, like, what it is that, you know, you've been trying to tell me? And just let them know, like, you know, I wanted to create a safe space where you can share anything you want without me giving you, without me having feedback. So whatever you say, I'm just going to take it. I'm going to take a look at it. 
and I'm going to investigate whether that feels true for me. And that's like the important part. It doesn't mean you just have to like take it and be like, all right, fuck it. You know, they're telling me all this stuff. I must not be good or I am good or whatever it is. It's like, I'm going to investigate whether or not that feels good for me. And, you know, we can look at it from there. So uh, I think it's a huge mistake to volunteer um, to people when they don't want it, especially when you're using language that sounds like you're trying to fix them or fix the situation. The moment you use language that makes people feel like they're broken, they shut down, they don't listen, guarantee it. Uh, Matt was just asking about us coming to Europe with Marcy. Uh, Matt, it probably would not be possible, unfortunately, for you to come meet up with us because we're doing a lot of really exclusive, um, like private type of stuff. Uh, as I know, I can let you know where we're going to be, but it's uh, definitely Italy and France are the places we'll be. I just know that a lot of the environments we're going to be in are, are like closed ceremony environments. Um, so if there's opportunities to come meet, I will definitely let you know. Yeah, I'm still looking at that myself and seeing if all those dates work for me. We were just having that conversation last night. Cool. Um, any any other questions, guys? And Michael, if you um, PS, if if that's something you want to clear, like if you have a lot of uh, I don't know, you know, many or a few relationships that you're looking at, that it would be. Uh, of use to you to get things complete in that relationship, start looking at how to recreate possibility in there. I really um, would just uh, recommend, or you know, if you want to take a look at our coaching program, go to satoriprime.com backslash coaching. I guarantee you we can get all that stuff handled well, without a doubt. Uh, I'm a true believer that everything can be handled inside of communication. If, if some breakdown is happening in a relationship, it's always a miscommunication problem, always. Um, and it's, and it, again, like I said, it's mostly because people are untrained listeners. You think because you have ears, you're listening and most people are not, they're so unrelated to the little voice in their head and that they're really just listening to the little voice and it's feedback all the time. And they genuinely are barely, if anything, they're just not hearing anything their environment is saying. And the limitation in the possibility that, that creates in your life, because it just completely closes you off the possibility when you're all you're doing is just listening to what's happening between your left and your right ear. Um, it really limits and makes your life a lot smaller than it can be. And that's a huge, huge thing to uh, break through in and really move past. <clears throat> Any other questions guys? Okay, cool. All right, guys. So if there's no more questions, I'll probably uh, wrap up today. Um, yeah, I, I muted up, Sandy. That's why. I just wanted to so you guys don't listen to the background noise while I was waiting for a question to come through. Yeah, I'll give it like, you know, 30 more seconds and see if any other questions come through. And um, if not, I'll wrap up for today. And thank you to everybody who did ask questions and a few of you guys sent me uh, private messages here and feedback. I appreciate that too. <clears throat> My pleasure, Kim. All right, guys, I'll shut it down. I uh, love you very much. Uh, we'll see you next Monday. And look, for all of you guys who are on here, um, you know, whatever's going on in your life currently, just look at kind of like what we shared about the money conversation, run an experiment and keep it super simple. Guys, work on the micro, work on the sensational part of your body. Like, how does it feel for me? Notice that when you feel like shit, bad things happen around you. Notice that when you feel great, amazing things are happening around you. That is a law of magnetism that's happening for you. So you want to consistently be in the practice of what does it look like to increase my vibrational frequency, to only be in that which is greater for me, to only be in that which makes me feel good? Uh, I can tell you for us and for our high-end clientele, like this is what we work on all the time. It's all about the feel, only taking actions consistent with that which feels good, which I know scares the shit out of people. 
because most people think that they need to be doing things that don't feel good for them. And then you're pushing and trying to make things happen and controlling and manipulating and doing all that stuff to create the outcomes that you think you want in your life. Then you get those outcomes or you don't get those outcomes. And either way, you feel like shit because you're not operating inside of what's in your personal passionate alignment. So no one has to live that way. It's just a matter of kind of like getting over that hump and getting over that initial fear that's caused when you're like letting go of the oars and really just letting life guide you. God guide you, universal energy guide you, spirit guide you, whatever you want to call it. And really trusting that so much and seeing how your life starts unfolding when you just stick and stick yourself directly in the flow of life versus trying to control that flow. So that would be my little words of wisdom. Take on like one or two things, hyper-focus on them. And it's not about trying to fix or understand anything. It's just about what do I notice? So it's like I'm noticing that I have fear. I'm noticing that this doesn't feel good. I'm noticing that you know, X, Y, and Z and all that kind of stuff. And, and the more you do that, the more you'll watch your path widen, the more opportunities you'll see. And the easier it is to just let go of stuff and just start moving yourself towards that, which is in alignment with the things that you truly, truly want in your life, okay? Love you guys. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye, everybody.